So, we're going to talk a little more about circles. First, we want to recall a useful fact. For any numbers a and b, if you have a plus b quantity squared, you cannot distribute the exponent. That just doesn't work. What you can do is remember that squaring is multiplying something times itself. So this is equal to a plus b times a plus b. That is equal to a squared plus a times b plus b times a. Those are the same thing. That's 2ab plus b times b is b squared. So a plus b quantity squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared for any values of a and b. So now to bring it around to circles, the general form of a circle is x squared plus y squared plus cx plus dy plus e equals 0. Uh, for some values of c, d, and e. We also have center radius form of a circle. It's a different form of equation. It's called center radius form because the equation is related to those features of the graph. So a circle with center hk and radius r has the equation x minus r, oops, oh, sorry, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. This form equation is nice because it is related to these actual features of the graph. If you have the equation in this form, you know that you know where the center is exactly. You know exactly what the radius is just by looking. You also know for sure that as long as this is a positive number, as long as r squared is a positive number, you know that you actually have a circle because this equation is not a circle for all values of c, d, and e. Sometimes it's not actually a circle. Um, but there are times that you will want one over the other, so we want to be able to go back and forth. So, I'm going to move my paper up so you can see, and I will say put the equation in general form. And the equation that we'll work with will be x minus 3 squared plus y minus 5 squared equals 1. So this is a circle with radius 3, 5. I'm sorry, I totally misspoke there. It's with center 3, 5, that's a point, and radius of the square root of 1, which is just 1. So now, 
to put this in general form, I'm going to be using that useful fact that I reminded you of at the beginning. And expanding this will give me x squared minus 6x, that's 2 times x times negative 3, plus 9, because that's negative 3 squared, plus y squared minus 10y, because that is 2 times y times negative 5, plus negative 5 squared, which is 25. And that is equal to 1. Now I want to rearrange things and combine like terms so that it is in that general form. And I'll give me x squared plus y squared. Then I want my term with the x, so that's negative 6x. Then I want my term with the y, so that's negative 10y. And then I want my constant term. So I've got 9 plus 25 is 34. Now the general form does require a 0 on this side, so I'll need to move that 1 over by subtracting 1 from both sides. And I'll have x squared plus y squared minus 6x minus 10y plus 33 equals 0. And that is in general form. Now, more often we'll want to go backwards. We'll start with general form and we'll want to get it in this more useful center radius form. So let's have an equation that does that. Okay, now we have a problem to put in center radius form. The first thing that I'm going to do is group all of my x terms together, all of whatever power of x or 2. I have an x squared and an x term. I'm going to put them together first. I'll leave myself some empty space. And then I'm going to put my y terms, leave myself some more empty space and then I'll have the 10 there hanging out at the end. So I want to find a number that will f make this factor as a perfect square. I'm only interested in perfect squares because remember the center radius form, I'm going to make myself a note to the side, is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Since the, the center radius form requires it to be written just like this, I am only interested in, some, in a number, in a constant, that is going to make this factor as a perfect square. So, the number that is going to fit the bill is 25. Now let me explain how I know that. If I pull in this sheet from before, where we multiplied out the y minus 5 squared, which is a very closely related uh, thing, when I multiplied this out, I got y squared minus 10y plus 25. Remember, this came from, we squared to the first thing, that was our a squared, and then the second term is 2ab, so it was 2 times y times negative 5, that's what gave us the negative 10y, and then the 25 came from the negative 5 squared. So if I have over in this problem a negative 10 as the coefficient to the x, I can divide that by 2 because that came from the 2ab and then square what I got. That's going to give me what that final term is. 
Now if we look at this with an eye to factoring it, we factor this and get x minus 5 times x minus 5, which is x minus 5 squared. Now, of course, I added in this 25. I'm not, in general, allowed to just add things in, but I am allowed to do a plus 25 minus 25 because if I do this, I'm really just adding in a fancy form of zero. It's a useful form of zero because this positive 25 works perfectly to get factored in and create this perfect square here. But I do want to make sure that you're aware that I am just adding in a fancy form of zero there. So now let's look at the y part. I want to do the same thing. I want to add in a fancy form of zero that will give me one number that will allow this to factor as a perfect square. I'm going to approach it from the same way. I look at the coefficient of my y. I divide it by 2, so negative 2 divided by 2 will be negative 1, and then I square that and a negative 1 squared is positive 1. Since I can't just add something in, I need to balance it out by also subtracting 1. So now this factors as a perfect square. It factors as the perfect square y minus 1 squared. So now I have what looks like a good beginning towards my center radius form. I want to point out the 25, the positive 25, went into this perfect square. This negative 25 did not. So I need to make sure I just don't lose it. I can put it here at the end with all of my constants. So that's the negative 25 from there, the negative 1 from there, and the 10 that came in the original problem. So now I've got x minus 5 squared plus y minus 1 squared. So negative 25 minus 1 is negative 26, plus a positive 10 is negative 16. And of course, center radius form requires that number to be on the other side of the equation, so I add 16 to both sides. And there is my center radius form. x minus 5 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 16.